And now I'd like to request His Excellency, Mr. Laurent Fabius, Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Development France and former Prime Minister of France and President COP21 to present his inaugural address. Honorable Presidents, dear Ministers, Governor Schwarzenegger, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. I will speak English. Forgive me. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Pachori, for inviting me to this major event. I wanted to be here today for the DSDS. First, because it is an important event by itself, and because also it is on the road to the COP21 that France will host and chair at the end of this year. No doubt that 2015 will be a decisive milestone for our collective action, both on climate change and development. With many conferences, but particularly at least three major upcoming international conferences <coughs> on financing for development in Addis Ababa in July, on uh, sustainable development goals in New York in September, and on climate change in December in Paris. And today, and it was uh, emphasized by all our speakers, more than ever, we need to address climate and development together and not against each other. I would like to make four brief observations. The first one is, as far as science is concerned, the old climate skepticism is no longer an option. The last IPCC report confirmed that climate change, or rather climate disruption, is an obvious threat. And we must all thank Dr. Pachuri, Chairman of the IPCC, for his magnificent leadership on this. I consider that the scientific community has done its job and now governments, local authorities, business community, civil society need to act. <laughs> Second point, what can be expected from the Paris Climate Conference? I remember that and remember, when Paris has been chosen, well, it was easier because we were the, first, uh, the only candidates. Uh, many of the people who came and congratulated me said, and on the spot I didn't completely understand it, but now I understand. They said, good luck. <laughs> now, it's done. France will host the COP21 after the COP20 in Lima, which did a very good job. You must be assured that we will spare no effort to deliver the universal and meaningful agreement that the world needs. Negotiation among 195 countries on such an essential matter are the challenge. Achieving an outcome that can generally be considered a success will require, we all know that, a major shift in our economic models, what you call think and act different, toward low carbon pathways. And it will require strong political leadership 
and a collective spirit of responsibility and solidarity. So far as the presidency of the COP20 was in concern, we want to be transparent, impartial, and ambitious. We will make sure that every voice is heard. This agreement should be an agreement among all and for all. This agreement will need to be ambitious and respond to the scientific call for urgent action. And equally, it will need to fully take into account each country's right to development. An agreement that would lead some countries to consider their growth hampered by its provision would not be acceptable. What do we propose to achieve in Paris? Four pillars. The first one, major one, is a universal and differentiated agreement that demonstrates that we are taking action today and that we shall take additional strong measures in the long term to achieve our common objective of limiting global warming to below 2 degrees Celsius. And I hope, and we were discussing that a few moments ago, that we shall be able to agree on the major issues even before Paris. Second, national contributions by each country. We hope that they will be announced as early as possible so that we may gain a full and shared understanding of where we really stand. Third, the financial package. No significant reduction of greenhouse gas emission can be achieved without access, equitable access to sustainable development. You all know that the initial capitalization of the Green Climate Fund has amounted to over $10 billion. It is the first step. But beyond that, we need increased financing from both public and private sources to reach $100 billion a year, starting from 2020, while shifting investment <coughs> from high carbon to low carbon technologies, new technologies, new activities. And fourth, besides governments, we want the COP21 to gather <coughs> initiatives from other stakeholders, private businesses, local and regional entities and civil societies. We call on private companies and businesses and sub government entities to this agenda of solutions. My third remark is that taking action against climate disruption and for poverty reduction should not be regarded as two separate and contradictory goals. As Prime Minister Modi recently said, global awareness of climate change is an opportunity to improve the quality of life of our citizens and to fight poverty. The world, we all know that, needs growth in both developed and developing countries. The way forward is to ensure sustainable growth that creates wealth, jobs and social progress. Just as yesterday fossil fuels enabled our economies to develop, tomorrow clean technologies and the right policy framework can ensure a new cycle of sustainable growth and development. And action against climate disruption is and will be the source of opportunities. Now, what could India's role be in this country? The answer belongs to <coughs> India. Indeed, India is a major economy and therefore a major emitter, as well as a key player in both climate and sustainable development goal negotiation. At the same time, we all understand the constraints of India. We have taken note, too, 
of the ambitions which have already been proposed. 100 gigawatts of solar energy before 2020, a multiplication by three of the nuclear install capacity before 2025, 100 smart cities, very large programs in energy efficiency, frugality in consumption, these are real ambitions. And we all know that we need a signal that all countries are embarking on a trajectory toward a low carbon economy based on their national circumstances. No doubt, no doubt that India will play a leading role in this effort. And no doubt that it will do it under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi, who is really dedicated to this common goal. As regards France, apart from our national and European decisions, we shall strongly support all the initiatives taken by the Indian government to tackle climate disruption. We shall continue to collaborate with India on this issue, carbon-free energy, partnership on civil and nuclear energy, water, urban development, and space. Now my final word. I would like to reiterate the mantra of Prime Minister Modi when he said, together with all, development for all. I think this applies not only to India and it can inspire the entire world. Our common goal should be to reconcile human development and the preservation of nature. And in this regard, it is no surprise that the DSDS, this major event, is taking place in India, a country that since ancient time has always cherished nature. Now, the minister has said that Paris was a city of passion and fashion. Okay, I would add passion, fashion, action, and transformation. <laughs> I wish all of you a very fruitful meeting here. And for those of you who will come to Paris next December, a productive preparation and an excellent <coughs> COP21. Thank you.